Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're going to be discussing how we can add two databases to our .NET application. So let's get started. First of all, inside our terminal, what we want to do is we want to create our application. So we're going to put .NET new web API dash dash control dash controllers. Now we're going to put the name and I'm going to say sample ef dot API. You can call it whatever you want. So now it has been created. Now let us open our application in Rider. So now that our application has opened, so now that our application has opened in Rider, what we want to do is we want to create a new folder or new directory inside our main application. And I'm going to call this directory data. And inside this data directory, I'm going to create two classes. So the first class I'm going to be creating, it's going to, I'm going to call it a, my data class, my data DB context. So it's going to be the first DB context that I'm going to be utilizing. And I'm going to create another class as well, which is going to be called my second data db context so what i want to do here is first of all i need to install some packages so let's see how we can do it so the first one we want to add is going to be dot net add package microsoft dot entity framework core and now we can see it has been installed successfully then the second one is going to be dot sqlite let's clear it as well here we're going to be clearing it up and then we're going to put microsoft same one dot sqlite this is the database I'm going to be utilizing. Then we want to install as well. Let's clear this up. Let's utilize the same thing. We need to install the design. Perfect. Now that the design has been installed. The last one we're going to be, be utilizing. Let's clear it again. We're going to be installing the tools. Perfect. So now this has been installed. If we go to our CS Pros. So if we come here. CS Pros will be able to see that all of our NuGet packages has been installed. Entity Framework Core, Design, SQLite and Tools. Everything is being installed successfully. Perfect. So the second thing that we need to do is inside my 2db context, what we need to do is we need to inherit from db context class. And this will allow us to actually have our db context initiated. And all of the properties our db context will need to have is already going to be there. So once we have done that, then what we need to do is we need to provide its configuration through the constructor. And I'm going to put here inside the constructor, we need to put the db context option. And then I need to provide my constructor's name or basically my class name. It's going to be my data db context options and we need to do as always provided to the base class perfect and the same thing that we need to do is we need to provide it to the second one so we need to first of all create the constructor and then here all i need to do is then put the db context options and then i need to provide the db context name so my second db context and i'm going to call it, it's going to be options and as always i need to provide it to the constructor as well base and i need to put it here as options Okay, perfect. And this one to be my second db context, my second db context. Oh, and we forgot here to utilize to inherit from the db context class. Okay, perfect. So now that it's actually, we have done the main work that we need to do through our uh, two db context that we need. What I want to do is I want to actually go to my program.cs and start configuring these inside my program.cs. So before we do the builder.build, .build, what we want to do here is we want to start defining our db context. So let's start by defining the first one. So we're going to start by builder services dot add db context and here i want to specify my first db context which i'm going to utilize it's going to be called my data db context and then from here what i want to do is i want to specify the options that i'm going to be utilizing so i'm going to say here options dot use sqlite so that's going to be my database type and then inside my sqlite here i need to provide my connection string so for this i'm just going to keep it simple and i'm going to utilize a directly uh, injected here connection string and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put data source equal app one or db one dot db so that's going to be my first data source the second one is going to put builder dot services dot add db context is going to be my second db context and then here i'm going to specify the option again and i'm going to specify the type of the connection that i need so i'm going to put option dot use equal light data source equal db2 dot db and then now once i have this basically i have configured my full db context and now my application knows that there's two db contacts that we need to utilize and i have two db contacts inside my application so what I want to do here, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to create a model folder. And inside this models folder, what I want to do is I'm going to create two different models. So these models will represent a table inside each of the databases. So the first one, I'm going to be calling it user. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to pop ID and, oops. So that's going to be an integer of type ID. And then we're going to have another one, which is going to be a string. And this is going to be, oops, string. And this is going to be a full name pretty straightforward and we're going to create another one uh, another class and this class i'm just going to call it logins so i can log for example the user's logins and here i'm going to have 
prop it's gonna be a GUID and this is gonna be the ID for it and also I'm gonna have here like for example date time like login time login time and I'm gonna also have here an int for the user ID for example something like that and here what I want to do is just want to make sure equal string dot empty so once we have done this and now I have my two tables what I want to do is I want to go back to my DB context and I want to inject them here so before my constructor I want to add them here so we're gonna put public virtual DB set and this is the first one where I'm gonna put the users I'm gonna put here users and we're gonna put the getters and the setters and let's fix those references here perfect now this my first DB context will have this types of users uh, this type of table and my second one we're gonna do the same same thing we're gonna put public virtual db set and this is gonna be logins and we're gonna put logins and we need to put the getters and the setter let's fix those references okay perfect so now what i want to do is i'm gonna put clear i'm gonna put now i need to create all of these and create the migration for them so we're gonna put dot net create the migrations so we need to put dot net ef migrations add we're gonna say initial migration and now we're gonna see what's gonna happen it's going to be really interesting. So here we're going to be seeing that because I have two DB contacts inside my application, my application by itself is not able to detect which DB contacts that it needs to utilize in order for it to do the migration. So what I need to do is I need to pass the DB contacts that I want to utilize in order for my application to know that this is a DB contacts that's going to be utilizing in order for it to work. So what I want to do here is the uh, same command. I'm just going to add dash dash contacts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my program.cs and I'm going to take my context name. So I'm going to use for the first one, my context, my data context. And now I'm going to run it again. And now we can see it work because basically what I did here inside my command, let's clear it up and we can see it again. I basically specified which DB context I wanted to utilize. Okay, perfect. So now that I have done that, let us actually do the DB update for this. So we're going to put .NET EF database update dash dash context and I need to specify the same DB context that I wanted and now once we run it perfect we can see that DB1 has been created and if I open this up let's test the connection apply okay and now we can see my DB1 here and I should be able to see my tables inside of it now and we can see table users is here perfect so now let's do the same thing for the other database so let's clear this up first and then we're going to go back to the migration and instead of for my db contacts it's going to be my second db contacts so let's copy it directly from the program.cs we're going to be adding it here let's run it now a new migration will be created for my second db contacts and what i want to do here is i want to basically run the db update for this let's clear it i'm going to put .NET, ef database update i'm going to specify my context and then my second db context and we're going to be running it and now we can see it run and now i have my db2 also available for me if i open it up that's the connection for it apply okay and now we can see i have my db2 here and we should be able to see the table logins here so we can see now we have two databases db1 which can contain my users db2 is going to contain my logins and all of them are basically going to live side by side within this so you might think to yourself okay great now i have these in place why do i want why do i want to have two db contacts or two databases and the reason that you might want to actually have two databases rather than one if you want to do some separation of concern so let's say you're utilizing the cqrs model and basically what you want to do is you want to have one database only for reads one database only for writes and you want to have for example one database for more of a transactional one for like basically some information you only capture a few amount of time or we want to have one for example non-sql database on another one which is a sql database and in order for you to do this you're going to have to deal with two db contacts inside your application you need to know how to switch between them or sometimes you would just want to have one db contacts just for logins and the logging mechanism and the other one is for your application business logic so in this case you will kind of require two databases and for that you're going be requiring to db to db contact so with the simple implementation by actually utilizing the contacts keyword inside the command prompt to actually execute the different commands and by adding the db contacts keyword into the uh, db contacts class that we create we are actually able to create as many db contacts as we want this could have its benefits and its disadvantages it all depends on the business need that we need to have so with this video i hope it was helpful 